So you can write promissory note, you can write truth, and like this. The paper itself is, uh, is neutral. Hi, Rebecca from ATNZ News. Um, I know we touched on the dot com saga in the, in the theatre, but I just want to ask your opinion on what do you think about file sharing websites and the case that's been brought against King.com? I haven't been following the details of the, 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 of the King.com, so I'm not going to comment on that specifically. I think um, what I'd like to do is more positively when it comes to f the uh, when it comes to teenagers listening to music, I'd like or people listening to music in general, I would like us to try to create systems where it is easy to do the right thing. So in other words, I think it's uh, there are some systems you use on internet where it's actually quite easy to pay money to you know you can download you can pay money to download stuff you can pay money to listen to stuff. You can subscribe to individual concerts. You can subscribe to a thing like a radio station where you get, where, and in each of these cases, money goes back to the people who play the music and the people who wrote the music. So I think, well, I think what I think we need to do is to make, uh, uh, I'd like also to be able to have uh, extra systems where when I'm reading blogs or reading newspaper articles, I can read them for free but decide that I'm, at, the, at the end of the month, I'd like to just give. A certain amount of like, and I give a hundred dollars to to be distributed to all the people, things that things that the machine knows I enjoy out there. So all I can have all kinds of different business models. I think we need to be more creative in the way we <coughs> we build. The, we are thinking people to do the right thing. Is there anyone else who hasn't asked a question who would like to ask? Um, kind of related to that, and um, we know that so many people are interested in the research that you've done. Um, resulting in people um, being charged and fined to go into an internet court system based on um, downloading the latest Rihanna song or something like that. Um, what would your thoughts be on um, you know, young New Zealanders or people simply just exploring their interests ending up seeing them spider to those themselves? Um, sorry, I don't know the details of, uh, of what you call Skynet. Okay, so I, hope I can't comment on that at all. Uh, so again, so, so um, as sort of again, what I said just said before, but I said there's a, a, I think it's important for uh, teenagers to learn that, that, that to pay for music. I know that I think there's not there is an expectation now is that there's a different expectation because it's so easy to distribute to uh, uh, to, to distribute music. Uh, I think a lot of <coughs> people nowadays uh, assume that they ought to be able to have a choice. To, uh, I think maybe. Um, uh, as I would say, we need different d different business models. So one possible business model is that you have a choice of a lot of things to listen to once. Also, if you want to just listen, to, or if, uh, <coughs> if you just want to listen to a certain genre of music because I don't really like it, or, uh, or that sort of thing. But in fact, that would be relatively cheap, and then you make the decision to buy an album, for example. Where then that's relatively expensive to be able to make different levels of investment. Certainly, I've heard from. Uh, from some, you know, young people or that they, that they that they want to have that, and that that's a two-level system, and of course, and of course systems like subscription systems like Last of the and, and Spotify and so on, to some extent, do give you uh, a, a way of getting lots and lots of music quite cheap, uh, but without the <coughs> uh, without competing with really uh, down being able to, to buy an album. Michael Wall, uh, what's the Prime Minister receptive? To the messages you've been giving today? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about it because we so don't really want to talk about your discussion. No, I'm not going to discuss it. I'm not going to discuss it. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have a question? Oh, it's already asked yeah. one. Uh, could I just ask mm -hmm. one last question? Yeah, there's, there's only time for a couple more, so yeah. Um, thinking back to 1989, are you, what's your reaction to how people use the web today in terms of the incredibly high? I don't know, watching porn, watching cats on videos, arguing with strangers on the internet. Is that the kind of thing you envisage? Well, if you look at the world before the web, there was quite a lot of really strange stuff going on. If you look at the things which have been printed in paper, there's quite a lot of strange stuff. Well, you, could, you might argue that paper costs a bit more to print, so it's a little bar. Of, but, uh, but I think when you look out there on the web, uh, if you remember on the web, then if, you, if you're trying to yourself watching something on the web in general, you have yourself to blame. So that 
you know, for example, if you if if you find yourself constantly finding things that you find obnoxious or or stupid, then you should uh, then think about the links you've been following. Don't follow follow them again. Take things out of your bookmarks if you don't find that bookmark has is giving you good, good quality things. Very much on the web, you can choose the bookmarks you keep. You can choose the places you start. If you find yourself, if you find when you are looking on the web that you find yourself spending a lot of time looking at porn, or a lot of time looking at, look, looking at little kitties, then I, th you know, then I think you need to just remember there's a lot of really good stuff out there, uh, and uh, that uh, there are a lot of places where you will find links to, you will find li links to, for example, so many of the people sitting around here, I'm sure, have uh, uh, organs up there on the web which are uh, which are producing, uh, which, which they think are producing high, fine, high quality information, uh, which they're going to take a lot of trouble to, go, to think about whether to write it down. And uh, you have that option. Uh, uh, anyway, some of the kids are pretty funny, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> so, what you thought of 30 years ago was to is the, uh, what might happen? The idea was definitely that the web should be, uh, you should be able to put anything on the web. It shouldn't, the web should not constrain what you do. What has been great, in fact, has been the uh, the amount of creativity, just the amount that the people have used. When you look, if, uh, yes, I couldn't have imagined all the things out there. Now, well, if we all sat down and tried to think of the craziest, most wonderful things that anybody was <coughs> could think of, and you all wrote them down in your newspapers, and uh, your blogs, and so on, mm -hmm. then we could try our best, but meanwhile, there's somebody out there who is going to produce something next week out there on the web, which none of us could possibly imagine. So that is the amazing thing, and it's not because of the web technology; it's because of humanity and the, the, you know, the incredible creativity and innovation that there is in people. Uh, final question from uh, from William. You spoke a bit about in your talk about the divide between those who program and those who code, and also about the fact that. Teenagers nowadays tend to see computers as appliances mm -hmm. and things you can't change. Do you think that there needs to be more education about programming? I know that I wasn't taught to have anything about programming in school. Do you think that that education needs to look at more? Yes, I do. I think that uh, uh, if you look, uh, certainly there's a uh, we need more people coming into the universities <coughs> with uh, who realise that that the, the that computer science is something which they're interested in. It's, can we, can, can we, I suppose doing computer science and, uh, and programming and developing a website and to a certain extent are the different professionals, professions, uh, and, but and they're also very, very different from just using, learning to use a computer. I think unfortunately a lot of schools, for, for particularly for younger kids in some parts of the world, uh, think that program, teaching somebody to use a computer like use the word processor on it and maybe use a spreadsheet is teaching computer. It's not. But it's, using, it's teaching to be a user. Teaching, uh, I think, explaining what programming is at an early age is important. Not because a lot of people will be, but because uh, you need to, to, to explain what programming is. So there are a few people there will be who really get it. And even though they may be quite young, they might. Uh, they might uh, start to get into programming, uh, find it very exciting, find it a very creative medium, uh, find that they end up handing in their, uh, their history assignments in terms of as a program, uh, instead of a, uh, as an essay, for example. Uh, and I think sort of encourage, uh, encouraging uh, creativity at that level in, the, as in programming is valuable because those people would otherwise be uh, in a way frustrated because that piece of their mind isn't really being exercised, and from the point of view of also the, 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 the needs we have out there, just looking at the uh, the need to put government data on the web, for example, there's a dearth of people that, uh, that understand how, how, to, how to do it. In, in the UK, the Open Data Institute, uh, which is which the uh, government's called into being in, uh, in East London, one of the things it's doing, it's, uh, it's nurturing startups, but also it's teaching people to the, the technology. Fantastic. Okay, thanks. Thanks everyone. Let's uh, leave you on.